Hello, lovely people. I am Mark J. Aquaviva of the Aquaviva School of Yoga, coming to you live for your Yoga Solutions, your weekly Yoga Solutions broadcast on this uh, chilly December day, 10th of December 2019. I hope you're having a wonderful time wherever you are. And uh, yes, this is a pivotal moment. I, I um uh, I, I managed a live last week, but uh, I didn't quite have uh, the gear in place to be able to do it. And uh, this week I have a webcam <laughs> and a microphone and a computer to uh, make it happen. Um, it, I, I've got to say thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. Um, I'm really quite touched and uh, blown away by the support that I've received from you all. Sorry, I, I try not to get too emotional. I'm, I'm a very emotional man. It's my Italian background, I think. Um, anyway, um, thank you so much to have got me to this place where I can get back online. I haven't got all the bells and whistles yet and I haven't quite got the... Um, the, the stuff I need to to sort of make a proper online pr presence with my courses and stuff, but they're going to go ahead anyway, and because uh, the um, the Just Giving page it, is incredible, it's um, it's it's over halfway now, and um, so I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna be able to get something good together um, to keep going with this work. So uh, my heartfelt thanks to everyone out there, um, yes, for your for your amazing support. It's um, it's really blown me away and, and shifted something in me and um, so thank you uh, okay so let's get on with some yoga um, had a question from Barbara the the um, ever helpful Barbara with her questions thank you so much um, the question was something around yes it, it's a, a, a feet and uh, using the feet and standing postures, balances, that sort of thing. Okay. It's a uh, ah, perennially important line of inquiry. So uh, let us begin. Let's see. Um, I think I might leave it on close up for now, even though I'm going to stand, because I, I want you to see. You know, the question was feet and standing balances, so or standing postures and balances. So. Um, I'll leave the close up so you can see what goes on with my feet. Uh, could possibly even get closer, but no, this will do. This will do. So, uh, yes, it's a very good question. Um, when when I'm on this subject on a on a workshop, um, it's c it, it kind of becomes clear that a, a lot of the instructions in yoga around where to hold uh, around joints and stuff um, are a result of not actually finding support directly from the feet. Actually, uh, I'll, <coughs> I'll, t I'll talk to you face to face before I before I get going. Um, yeah, it's um, it's like we we arrive in standing and we have this experience of standing which involves holding ourselves up generally. And it's usually the um, somewhere around the lower back, and if it's not around the lower back, it's in the abdominal muscles pulling de pulling down. Um, it's usually in the thighs and the kneecaps and hamstrings, and basically, it's the body bracing against collapse. And uh, and we get good at that. We get strong at it uh, because we want to do postures because we want to be upright, which is perfectly perfectly reasonable. But um, the thing that's being missed is that if we can actually use our feet to support ourselves, then what starts to happen is entirely different responses. They're, they're, they are muscular, but they're not the muscles that would prevent jo uh, joints from collapsing under weight. You know, the, the thing that I'm talking about, uh, the tensions that people talk about, like pulling the kneecaps up, for example, um, or you know, holding, pushing the pelvis forwards to hold the hips tight, uh, to brace around the base of the spine. Um, all, all those things, they, they are a result of not being supported at those places, at those joints. So the body's weight pushes down against folding joints, and so the joints have to hold back to stop you from collapsing. 
Um, but the reason for that is because support is not forthcoming. It's not coming up from the touch. It's not coming up f through the bones. It's not coming up through, or through the joints. So instead, weight going down against joints needs to be held against. So um, the whole of, <laughs> in many situations, the whole of the instructions behind the yoga practice are about what you need to do to not collapse, to what you need to do to hold yourself up which um, sort of, uh, and, when, and, when, and when you learn to hold yourself up uh, with that bracing, then um, it sort of precludes the need to use your feet. So, um, and also it, uh, the, the muscles that you get involved with sort of cut off the, nervous su the nerve supply to the toes and the feet, so you can't use them. So it's, it's, uh, it, there's a total paradigm reversal that can happen when you start to actually use your relationship to your earth through your feet. I don't mean using your feet, um, <laughs> because uh, 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 another thing that happens is when we're used to doing stuff to the body, uh, we can make the feet tense, and then you know they're still not really functioning because uh, we're just making a part of us tense. What we need is to feel supported, and um, what we usually do is we put weight through the heels. And that becomes our the, the version of bony support. But then we have this sort of floppy foot on the end of that, which, when it goes down, collapses, and our weight collapses over the ankle. And then we end up having to push, having to push the ground away to, um, to get away from the ground. Uh, so what I do to redress this is to start, start with the actual touch of the front of the foot. Um, and ideally, we want to be able to give our weight to the touch of the front of the foot, because uh, without that, um, without that f facility, walking becomes a collapse. So I'll show you what I mean. So wh when, when, we, um, when we walk, we uh, put the weight on the front heel, okay? And that usually that involves lifting the ankle and lifting a sort of dead foot, if, especially if you've got shoes on. And then the weight goes forwards, and usually that's a, a soft, collapsed foot that we put our weight against. So then we have to push the ground away, like I was talking about before. We're not actually supported by our touch. What's meant to happen is we're supposed to feel supported by the heel, but then the foot is already preparing to touch the ground so that as we arrive on the outer edge, followed by the ball of the foot, it becomes a place that we can roll our weight over rather than a, um, a, a sort of a collapsed foot, a collapsed heel that we have to pick up, yeah? that we have to pick up. Instead of that, we want a foot that can support us as we give our weight to the touch, which includes the front of the foot. And, and if we can, without that facility, uh, there's no way of understanding what support means. Okay? So, um, let's zoom out a bit so you can see more of me. So the thing, the thing that I, um, I like to do is to sort of reverse the situation, which is kind of the opposite of walking. It's about staying in place, really, which is useful for, um, for postures, because that's about being in a position and comfortable. So, um, a way to set up being supported by your touch is to start with the ball of the foot and to give it some responsibility. And uh, something I get people to do in, in my yoga classes is just uh, every now and again, not every time, but <laughs> when, we're w when, when we're on this subject, is to walk around on the fronts of the feet for a bit. And uh, you know, you might um, be aware that there's, um, it's, it's a normal developmental thing to do anyway. A, a lot of children end up sort of attached to walking on the fronts of the feet. Uh, because it's a lighter experience in the body. Okay? So we need to be able to be supported by the touch of the fronts of the feet. So to set that up, you can start with the ball of the foot and give it some responsibility. And the way you get the ball of the foot da down, um, most people will just pull the leg in with the groin and then still have a floppy foot and not feel supported by it. So the heel will collapse down as soon as you give it any weight. What I want you to try is actively touching from the foot. So it's, the, it's kind of the outer ankle that lifts, that puts so that the inside of the foot goes down, the ball of the foot. If you can engage with that, really all that is, 
all, all you're doing is you're touching the ground like you would with your hand. You, know? you put you, there's a there's an action on the outside edge that brings the pad of the thumb down to the ground, and then that would become somewhere that you support yourself from. It's the same with the foot. The outer edge of the foot lifts along with the ankle, and that lifting gives you the potential to put the ball of the foot down. If that can take some weight, then we can start to feel supported through our bones. Yeah? And that's what we're looking for. And uh, looking for that involves not having to brace the joints, you see. Um, it's not even bracing the ankle. I'm not holding uh, my ankle in a pointed direction. What I'm doing is I'm touching the ground and putting weight through the bones to that point of contact. And because it's structural rather than me pushing the ground away, those lines of support, um, all they require is me continuing to touch the ground, continuing to intend to touch the ground um, as I give it weight. So I'm not giving the weight to the heel, I'm giving it to, to where I make contact. That action, that giving the, the ball of the foot that responsibility, makes the local proprioceptive uh, responsive muscles around the joints um, strong. Not tense, responsively strong, because you're giving your touch the job of support. Then from that, so we're, we're, we are reversing the film of walking. From that, uh, from the inner touch, you sort of widen to the outer touch. Now that's not a collapse, that's not you. Um, that's not you taking away the effort of touch that supports you. It's not you letting that go to be on the outer edge. It's something that happens from the whole of the thigh. Uh, the, t the touch is happening in the lower leg to bring the ball of the foot down. And then the thigh itself, well, the two thighs, try to widen. And, and you find some muscles around the outside edges of things which will support, give you support back and up through your hips. Okay, so, so it's not a collapse of your inner touch. It's a widening to the space either side of you from your touch, which happens to bring the outer edge of the foot down. If you get that, if you can experience that feeling, then that's the beginning of you being supported up through your hips, um, through the outside edges of things. The inner touch will give you support up through the inside of things, through the midline of things. The outer edge of touch will start to give you support through the outer edges of things. And then when we can really feel supported by the touch of the foot and the, you know, the core responses and the structural support that we get um, away from the ground by that touch, then it's something that we can give our weight to. So instead of giving the weight to the heel, we give the weight to the front of the foot, and it supports us. And the result is support up the front and up through the sides. What that means we can do is we can then add a sense of touch with the heel. So we're giving the weight to the touch of the front of the foot, so the foot supports us. And then, particularly as you release the breath, you can add a sense of growing the heel away from you, away from the back of the body, so that the whole of the back of the body gets to elongate as a result of that touch. So the heel extends away from you to reach the ground. Now, mo this is where most people will pull the knee up. You don't need to. If you're supported through from the front of the foot, then the knee falls back and it's the back of the knee that starts to open. Uh, it, you don't need to push the pelvis forwards. The, the hip falls back with the heel, yeah? whilst you still feel supported back and up and through. Um, you don't need to um, push your back belly forwards or your back up because the front of the foot supports you away from the ground and actually the heel extends away from the center of the back of the waist to reach the ground. You don't need to, etc. The whole of the front of you get, remains supported by giving weight to the front of the foot, um, inner and outer touches, and then you add 
the extension of that heel away from you. And if you're still working on the same side like me, you'll be feeling some calf muscles right now. But they're actually toe muscles, foot muscles. And then the, then the touch of the heel, the active touch, not the plunking down of your weight, the engagement with the heel gives you support like you won't have experienced before. Because the body will not be heavy. What will happen is that, that final bastion of um, support that, that we usually start with becomes the place that you can let go of tension to. And because the rest of the foot is supporting all the way through your structure, the result, instead of a collapsed structure, in co in, instead of all the joints collapsing, means you can sort of remain released around the joints so you're not bracing against collapse. But you get supported up through them. So a lifting leg is no longer something that pulls you down. It's something that you can give more weight to the ground because of. You know? That, as long as it's not a dead thing that you're picking up. If it's part of you, if that foot can be involved in its own um, lift away from the ground then it, it's part of you, and its weight, particularly with the release of the breath, can be given to the touch. If the weights come off the front of the foot, then you're back to square one. What we need that actually is the weight to remain on the front of the foot, if you want to stay put, that is, and the heel to extend away from you to touch the ground. And the result is you know, all the stuff we're taught to do, like the core responsiveness and the... Um, God, that's tiring doing it on one side. Let's do it on the other. All the stuff that we're taught to do, uh, Mula Banda, the gathering back in the lower belly, uh, Uddiyana Banda, the gathering back in the solar plexus, um, Jalandra Banda, the sense of support back uh, in the throat, between the chest and the head. Um, all of these things, that, that all happens because the front of the foot goes down. All of it. Um, all of the relationships to space, which is through the outer edges, start to happen because the outer edge of the foot goes down. Okay. And then because we've set up this line of support through breathing and the release of the breath, because the breath has to accommodate all of these things, then the, with the release of the breath particularly, the heel can extend back and down away from the back of you create space at the back as well so that when we arrive in touch with a heel <sighs> the whole of us is supported in space and then any explorations in space can be from a sort of central release through the system <sighs> to that heel that would be the that would be the spine starting to engage directly through the foot. So it becomes a, a different setup where you let go of the breath and tension. The result is the spine awakens, particularly behind the heart. And as the spine wakes up, it connects to the heel. The foot expresses from that. The feet express from that as the spine connects to the heels. So we can start to expand in space. The hands express from that release. So we start to relax open in all directions as a result of letting go of tension. Um, it's not just up and down. We, we relax open. We relax open. We relax open in all directions because of the release of the breath. It takes a while to set it up because we're used to not using our feet. And if you can give yourself the time it takes to develop these responses, and I'll say one more time, so it's something I'm, f I'm very fond of saying. You get responses in the body when you give responsibility to the thing you're interested in waking up. So if you want your feet to strengthen, don't go around tensing your feet. If you want your feet to strengthen, give your touch, give your feet 
some responsibility. The heel is not, the heel is not your foot, not until you've got a, a proper foot going on. When you've got a proper foot going on, the ball of the foot, the little toe corner, your paw, your, your animal foot, when, when you've got the relationships from your touch through your body going on, then we have this additional magic thing that no other animal has where we can use the heel to grow the spine. Yeah. It's a unique thing to human beings as far as I can tell. I don't think, I don't think even uh, monkeys have it because they, ha they have... Uh, uh, feet that are used to folding back for climbing and things. Um, so, <sighs> yes, it's a, uh, w we have a unique situation being human with our feet uh, that involves support from the use of the heels in a, not just a passive way, in an active way, but because perhaps uh, sedentary lifestyle, shoes, uh, flattened surfaces, because we don't use the fronts of our feet, our animal feet. Um, most of us have got into the habit of just using the heels and then having feet on the end of that, which leads to all the complications that I was talking about at the beginning. So to reverse that process, we need to get back to the, the animal foot, the, the, the real foot, the paw the thing that supports us in space when we're, <laughs> when we're scampering along the Serengeti. <laughs> I don't know. Um, uh, by the way, uh, you, any of you runners out there, um, I'm sure most of you have come across the idea of not heel striking. Um, it's very, very sensible. Heel can touch, but it mustn't be the landing point uh, when you run, because it's not natural, it's not, and it's not good for your joints. Um, so, anyway, I hope that made sense. Um, and uh, I, I don't, yeah, I, I hardly mentioned balancing. Uh, it's nothing, it's very little to do with it, actually, because the idea of balancing is the idea of holding yourself up over a dead base. Whereas uh, when you're working with your touch, um, there's relationships to that thing that give you support in space. And so it's not a, it's not a factor. Balancing is not a factor. Uh, apart from you don't want to push yourself off somewhere that is going to make you fall over. <laughs> um, anyway, okay, uh, I think that's about it. I uh, hope that was um, useful uh, for you, lovely people. I'm still feeling quite emotional. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try uh, <laughs> not to show show that too much as I wind down. Um, but thank you once again. Uh, what I've got coming up is uh, next weekend. Um, I'm doing a weekend up in Scotland in uh, for. Uh, last last one of the year for people on the course, but um, the Saturday is open. It's uh, Saturday the fourteenth of December at uh, in the moment in Glasgow. It's an open workshop. It's the last of the Yoga Solutions Autumn series, and it's about um, well the title is letting go and the natural rhythms of release, and it's about um, integrating the rhythms of breathing with what we're doing to find to find um, a release into what we are trying to achieve, which is kind of the, the holy grail of, of yoga practice, really. If we can let go into the outcome that we're looking for, then you kind of found the answer. Um, yeah, so that's uh, next Saturday, the 14th. The following Thursday evening, s December the 19th, I've been a bit slow in getting the advertising out for this, um, but I, I will be um, doing an introductory online workshop for my next online online course series, which, thanks to you amazing people, uh, will be going ahead. And the, 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 the last series, the Haptic Intelligence series, um, wa was amazing, and it, it still is. I'm, st I'm still doing the one-to-ones with people that followed the course. And... Um, it's kind of a it's a high end course. It's for it's for teachers. It's for body workers. It's or it's for dedicated practitioners. You you need to have a little bit of obsession really to to bother with the stuff that I'll be offering you. Um, it doesn't mean you have to be good at postures. It doesn't mean you have to be flexible. What you need to be is deeply interested in in your relationship to the world through the body. And um, if you are, then I can take you into um, some new experiences. 
the haptic intelligence course was all about touch and uh, types of touch and how that supports different parts of you in different ways. The next series, proprioceptive intelligence, is um, proprioception is about um, how we um, wh how how we m how we map out where we are in space, and it's al it's also to do with relationships between parts of ourselves. You know, it's your proprioceptive nervous system that allows you to be able to touch the tip of your nose with your eyes closed, for example. Um, and there's it expands to mapping out the space around us, and that's the part that's kind of generally missed. And I've been working with this for a couple of decades now, and um, uh, there's recent research to to show that actually it's a, an integral part of our nervous system. Um, this this ability to map out and uh, actually, and what I would say is engage with the space that we occupy, and uh, the proprioceptive. Um, intelligence series will be taking you through a similar sort of thing as the haptic intelligence series in that it's it's kind of getting us to explore different relationships to space uh, in the various um, structures of the body um, it's mostly around the spine but also with the limbs and you know and um, and how to how to find support directly from the way we meet space because uh, mo most of us have a reactive relationship to space based on history, where we've, um, you know, if, if, if you've been attacked from behind, then you will have a retractive uh, relationship to the space behind you. Or um, if you're in a rush to go ahead, you know, to move forwards, there, it'll be a similar sort of story. You'll be pulling away from what's behind to rush forwards. And um, all of these are seem like sort of vague um, emotional um, uh, relationships, but but they, uh, the the emotional content of it is is um, uh, a direct kind of has has direct physiological consequences, and the, and the way we engage with space and the way we breathe determines how we feel. Um, so um, yes, so it's a, it's an important subject, and uh, and I did have another idea for a course, but they, I th the 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 next. The course I was thinking of was going to be the one after. This one, uh, we need to be clear about how we relate to space as well as how we relate to touch. And um, on the haptic intelligence course, I didn't ignore space. Uh, and so on, on the proprioceptive course, I won't ignore touch. But uh, the, the baseline investigation will be in how to find better relationships with space that, that give us a, a, the feeling of being supported by the space that we occupy. It's a powerful course, and um, I, I have a limited number of people I can have on the screen. Um, but um, the the shape of the course is it's um, you get three one to ones with the course. When you buy the course, um, you can either be there uh, live and direct, and there's a limited number of places for that, and that will be one price. And those that um, can't make Thursdays but want to follow the course can follow the recordings and both um, both versions of the course come with one to one so I can uh, so that I can uh, witness directly what's going on in your practice on a one to one basis and iron out any complications uh, expand upon uh, understanding in, in difficult areas it's a really important part of it because um, our areas of difficulty are, are where the gold lies so it's important that you get one to one attention with that so, um, so like, it, it, yeah. So it's um, top end course, and I, I, I have a list of people that are definitely doing it already from from the haptic intelligence course, and uh, there's a there's a few people that have already pegged a place for the next for for this one as well. So there's a few places, uh, uh, there's a few live places remaining, I think, um, but I'll, I'll put the details up as soon as possible so that you can. Um, Join me for the intro workshop on December the 19th, and then there's a break over Christmas and New Year, and it will carry on, I think it's January the 9th, is the, is the beginning of the following six weeks. Okay, so that's a, quite a long explanation, and I, I explain because I haven't actually put all this up on the website yet, so I will do that uh, today, hopefully, if I get the time, and um, yes, it'll be available for booking soon. All right, lovely people, thank you so much. Um, I shall um, see you at the same time, same place next week. Uh, lots of love. Hope hopefully next week I'll have my logo back so I can do the, the flashy thing.
and um, yeah, lots of love, all the best.